This is Plane Maker Tutorial 33 and Blender Part 19. In this tutorial, I'm going to talk a little bit about texturing. Now, in my last tutorial, you noticed that this image looked quite a bit different than it does now. This is the same texture that we had applied on the cockpit object last time around. I need to rewind a little bit and cover some of the basics behind texturing just so that you don't get lost and frustrated trying all these different things and run into all sorts of difficulties. And for that, let's try and pull up a plane or two from X-Plane. Usually the Cessna 172 and the Cirrus are the ones that are being updated most frequently with the new features that you see displayed in X-Plane. I've been checking out some of the new features and I'm really quite impressed and happy with it. And I'd really like to show you some of those. But anyways, here's the Cessna 172 and let's look at some of the objects we've got here and how they're formatted in order to work with the textures that wrap around them. So basically the way these planes get loaded up in X-Plane is when X-Plane starts up and you've told it to load up the Cessna 172, it'll look into the 172 folder and look for a folder called Objects to see if X-Plane has to load up any 3D objects. And it will find the cockpit here and these objects. And what are they textured with? Well, they're textured with, for example, the fuse.png file. This is the fuselage file. Then we have the glass.png file. Here we have the prop. And then we have the wings. Now, in versions past of X-Plane, it was only allowed to have a texture file wrap itself around a certain object file and they had to share the same name so that when X-Plane would load up, it would find the object file and say, oh, I have to wrap this object file with this PNG file. But it seems to have changed because I'm seeing here that there's less PNG files than there are object files. So that tells me that you're allowed to use one PNG file to wrap it around several object files. Okay, so once that is all in the right position and structure, you can have a libraries folder and this one will allow you to have different folders with different paint schemes and they have to be structured in such a way that first of all you have a folder that denotes the title of your library and then you have to have a subfolder inside of that that has this folder objects mirrored there with the textures that were found in this folder replaced in this one here so you have the fuse and wings and those are the textures that will actually be changing with the altering paint scheme and so those have to be mirrored here and these two differ simply in the paint scheme. And then you'll, you'd find, just as expected, under the Skyhawk library, you'd find the same thing, objects, and then fuse.png and wings.png. And here again, you'd find the exact same layout, just with a slightly different paint scheme on it. So then you get to the interior, the cockpit files, and this is where you have the cockpit folder, and you can also have a cockpit 3D folder, where you have all the custom panels and backgrounds and everything that you need See, this is a custom panel that was made for the Cessna's background, and you would drag instruments in there, and those instruments grab their textures also from these subfolders here. So if there's an instrument that has a custom panel, X-Plane would look for that panel's texture in these various subfolders here. So each one of these folders represents an instrument that is being used on the panel, where X-Plane will search through this cockpit folder and find if it needs to replace any texture of any instrument with any of the ones that are listed here. So that allows you to customize the cockpit a lot, and that also comes in handy when you're trying to customize 3D cockpits and texturing them with the panel file. Okay, but what we're doing for the Embraer is we're doing a different little bit of a different approach that is made possible by some new additions and new features that have been added to X-Plane. Basically, what I've done here is I've started with the same cockpit folder here that's recognizable for the 2D cockpit. I've left that one be for a while because what I want to do is finish the 3D cockpit and then get back and decide on whether I even want a 2D cockpit or not. There's an increasing number of planes out there that aren't even equipped with 2D cockpits anymore, but there are advantages to having a 2D cockpit. Normally, they're easier to click on. They don't move around when you're in 3D cockpit view. They use less computer resources and it's sometimes nice to just have a flat view in front of you where you can concentrate more on flying than on trying to manage the views and everything like that. So I might actually go back and create a 2D cockpit out of the 3D cockpit based on the images and the renders and the textures that I can come up with for my 3D cockpit. Now I have quite the collection of 3D 
custom objects accumulated already, but I've started to change my strategy now and I'm starting to think it might be a better idea to actually go ahead and model a lot of these instruments in 3D and just animate the needles inside the instrument and stuff like that. Well, the thing about the Embraer's cockpit is you have a lot of electronic displays, electronic panels, so I will have to resort to using some 3D cockpit uh, textures from this folder right here. And I'll give you an example of what I'm working on here. I have, for example, like the EFIS here, maps. I'm altering them in Photoshop right now to suit my particular cockpit design. And as I described in my last tutorial, what I had discovered was that we're able to now use two textures for our cockpit object. And that actually opened up a lot of possibilities. And I went ahead and did some changes on my cockpit to reflect and take advantage of this possibility that we have now. So I split up my objects into two categories. One category is the one that I'm intending to texture with a stationary texture file, one that isn't drawing from any animated textures that are found here in my cockpit 3D folder of my planes folder. And the other set of instruments are the ones that are textured like that. And I still have to make a choice on how exactly I'm going to do this. I found out that these knobs here are going to be mouse clickable and I'm not going to be texturing them with an animated texture. The knob itself is going to be animated so I don't need to cover it with an animated texture. So this layer right here contains all my objects textured with this texture here and it all looks very crisp and clean and you can zoom in and see the detail there and read everything clearly. So what I tried to do for this plane is create an entirely new panel texture with everything custom made in Photoshop. I'm going to take one of these instruments as an example and expand on how I accomplished this look. Now these topics are all a little bit difficult to talk about because I'm right now discovering a lot of these things myself. So as I'm trying to share them with you, I'm going through and making a lot of discoveries. So for example, I discovered not long ago how to use the bake feature in Blender to make panels that look nice and smoothly shaded. There's other stuff I'm learning, for example, how to make these instrument surfaces look as though they're reflective, which just adds to the dynamism and realism of this whole thing. So right now, for example, I'm already seeing that I have to dedicate one tutorial to how to bake textures onto objects, and I have to dedicate one tutorial to how to line up all these instruments and how to get these texts to be so crisp and clean and how to get the backgrounds to be uh, pretty sharp as well. Now notice I'm going for a pretty new modern jetliner. I'm not going for uh, like there's a guy that on explain.org who makes vintage warbirds and stuff and they've got all sorts of beautiful wear and tear and all that stuff. My premise is a little different. I want people to sit down on my plane and think that they're sitting in a brand new plane and I will do some aging and weathering but it will be minimal. I personally in my taste I like the glossy stuff, the, the stuff that looks crisp and modern and uh, that's sort of where I'm going with this. And I also learned how to make these knobs and dials clickable and manipulatable so that you can actually click on any one of these objects and if they're programmed correctly you have a function attached to them. So this actually revolutionizes the way a 3D cockpit can be made. When I explain how to make this, uh, this landing gear lever I explain how to make it by wrapping a mouse clickable texture or region around it and that's how it's manipulatable here. But I figured out how to actually be able to manipulate these without having to texture them like that. You can determine which of these regions of the texture lights up and which ones remain unaffected. Like for example here you see that these aren't hooked up to this fader. But just to showcase a little bit of what's possible to do in, in, in this environment with that sort of data and information. Alright, so in the next couple of tutorials I'll be talking about how to achieve these kinds of textures. I'm going to be talking about how to achieve these uh, rotary knobs and the uh, items that you can click on the panel and that they are hooked up to certain functions. Oh, and another thing you'll notice here is there's uh, 3D lighting in the cockpit. Unfortunately, I haven't really gotten that much further with modeling this cockpit than we were before. I've gotten a lot more detailed with the textures and the lit texture, the night texture, and I've also played around with uh, making all these objects mouse clickable, and it all works, but every time you export an object from Blender, you have to reprogram these mouse click regions, which is a little bit of a pain. I hope the Blender export script starts to incorporate that soon, because it does take a lot of time to do. So anyways, there you go. I hope you enjoyed this little preview of where I'm heading with this cockpit. I think it's quite fun to, especially at night, I'll show you the daytime textures too. You still have the lights in the cockpit on, which make, make it look a little bit too bright. But you can turn all these things up and down, which makes it kind of cool to, to play around with. 
please rate the video and subscribe to my channel and spread the word and you know the drill. Thanks.